Hello, my name is David Watkin. Uh, I'm a cellist and I took part in John Elliott Gardner's Bach Cantata Pilgrimage in the year 2000. And I'm here to introduce Cantata number three, Ach Gott wie Manches Herz in Light. Um, it's available on this CD, which is volume 19, which is part of the whole box set, which you can get from the Monteverdi website. Um, in fact, the CD itself is worth it just for the aria that Jerry Finley sings in the other one on this CD, one of the other ones on this CD, which is Cantata 13, which is an extraordinary piece. But I've chosen this one, number three. It's from 1725, it's from Bach's uh, uh, chorale cantata cycle. So it's based on a chorale, which goes dun, 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 da, 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 like this. Um, he was commemorating the 200th anniversary of Luther's Book of Chorales. Um, so it, it's beautifully hangs together on the sort of motifs from this chorale. The piece is bookended by an amazing chorus at the beginning and an incredible duet uh, at the end. And uh, the chorus starts with a pair of oboes de more. Now, it's, I think it's an almost Bach's equivalent of the Handelian sublime. It's a very sad text. When you read the text in the libretto here, you think, what's this piece gonna sound like? When you hear the introduction, uh, the music is so sublimely gorgeous and, and, and warm. It's in A major. It's what key that many of Bach's contemporaries think of as a warm, orange, happy key. Um, and you almost want to check that you've programmed the right, that, that you've got the right track on your CD because it can't be right. This introduction can't go with this text, but it does. Um, it's, it's music of uh, consolation in many ways. And when, even in the introduction, when the oboes finally modulate on around a little cycle going in, in towards the minor keys, it then becomes unbearably poignant, uh, which is why I'm saying it's, it's rather like, like uh, something sublime, if you like. Um, the other thing that happens in this, in this opening chorus is the, the chorale appears in the kind of giant steps uh, of the bass line. And when you play, when you do this as a bass continuo player, and I imagine as a singer in the choir as well, you feel that you're, uh, that you're sort of spanning a huge uh, phrase where rather like taking off in a hot air balloon and, and people appear like little ants scurrying about, those people who are doing smaller phrases underneath you. So you get this almost kind of overview of, of life. It kind of expands your experiences when you're doing what we call playing in augmentation. So kind of twice as slow, four times as slow as everybody else. Then you get the chorale melody coming back again as the introduction to a recitative whilst the actual chorale is interspersed with the recit. So it's incredibly innovative uh, way of, of combining these things. So, so the four lines of the recit appear interspersed with different bits, sorry, the four lines of the chorale appear interspersed with different bits of recitative that, like a kind of Lutheran catechism, ask questions, um, pose different sort of solutions to the, to the questions asked by the chorale. Um, then there's a most extraordinary aria for bass. Um, and I just wanted to share with you a thought here, as a, as a cellist, as a basso continuo player, this is the Bach Werker Verzeichnis. It's the catalogue of everything that survives um, that, that, that Bach wrote. And you can see, just opening it randomly there, each of the pieces and each of the movements has a couple of bars of music and, and details of you know, where the sources are in which libraries, this kind of thing. So, uh, but it's an overview, really, of, of Bach's surviving output. Now, we think of Bach as a keyboard player. Um, I just want to show you, um, I've made a little yellow mark there. That's, that is Bach's keyboard output. Everything on this side is his kind of concerted call music, cantatas, passions, motets, etc. And on the other side is the kind of what we call orchestral music, um, chamber music, that kind of stuff, and then the, the appendix. Essentially though, that's if you're a string player, particularly if you're a cellist, that means really apart from about 100 pages in the middle there, everything in this book belongs to you. Every, you're on duty 
constantly, all the time. Um, and really it's a privilege to have been part of that team that, that, uh, that did all of that during 2000. And this aria is a wonderful example of that. Jerry Finley, amazing singer, um, singing this aria, almost tortuous kind of aria. Again, it's got the three note upbeats which come from the chorale melody um, and followed by a recitative and then as I'm saying the other kind of bookend is this beautiful duet with soprano and alto where again it's music of consolation there's a particularly poignant moment I think where um, where the singers sing will ich in Freudigkeit zu meinen Jesus singen um, I'll sing in joy you know, even though I'm carrying my cross and, and, and all this kind of, the, the sort of pain of everyday life is there, I'll still sing in joy. And they have this most beautifully sort of pointed little phrase that's, uh, that's poignant. Um, the whole thing is topped off, of course, with the chorale itself, finally bringing together all these elements to, to sort of culminate in the chorale itself. Um, and it's tempting as, as modern people, as modern musicologists will do, to look at it as a kind of Gesamtkunstwerk, as a, as a whole piece of art that hangs together with beautiful coherence. Of course, it, its main purpose was to have a liturgical context. Um, one of the things I wanted to say as well was, I said it's a privilege to be part of that team. John Elliott was able and is able now to call upon the most incredible pool of talent in his regular players and singers. And you hear that throughout this, this uh, box of CDs in, in 2000, of, of all the talent that was there um, and, it, and is there now. But also, um, we were, very often we would be inviting people from abroad to come and play with us from across Europe. Um, and in fact, there's a Xenia German Oboes is playing on this CD. And it was almost like a kind of Erasmus scheme, if you like, that, that there was a kind of interflow, an, a, an exchange of ideas. Um, you'd overhear little conversations, how do you scrape your reeds there and, and what kind of string thicknesses are you using there? And even now, 20 years later, I listen to these CDs and think, how does that colleague uh, spin that phrase out so beautifully there? It's a, it's a kind of sharing of experiences if you like, that was, as we look back on it now, saying goodbye to Europe, as we losing not just professional, but academic and educational links with Europe. Um, it's, it's rather a sad prospect, I think. So, music of consolation, and I hope you enjoy this cantata.